and all these kind of things. So it's it's a bit weird because Oxford itself as a city is quite small and almost taken over by the university in some ways. So in some ways it almost feels as though you're on campus and like in your colleges, you're very much sort of on campus, okay. but it's, it's like a... Yep, so I'm Elle. I'm a second year law student at Worcester College, University of Oxford. Would you like to mention your hometown? Yeah, so I'm from quite a small village near Sheffield, so I'm kind of wedged between the Peak District and um, Sheffield. <laughs> what is Ellie, the law student? Um, so Elle, the law student, is basically a access resource. Um, I think that applying to study law, applying to go to university, but especially applying to go to Oxford, which is just kind of shrouded in such mystery, um, can be really, really intimidating. And my kind of primary goal with my YouTube and my Instagram is just to kind of provide some information, answer all of your questions and just show what it's really like to be a university student, especially at Oxford, because things can be a little bit different from at other universities. Could you remind us of the course you're taking? Yeah, so I'm a law student. Why did you choose your course? Um, so I kind of got to law through a very, very roundabout route. Um, I was really interested in history and English literature at school. I absolutely love them. But then when I was kind of looking at doing English and history courses at uni, none of the content really um, excited me. Um, I couldn't see myself studying it for three years um, because most of the courses I was looking at, it was all like medieval history and um, medieval um, language and that kind of thing. Um, and that was, I, I was interested, but I couldn't see myself studying it for three years because I was more interested in like 20th century history, especially looking at kind of the end of the British Empire, civil disobedience and all of these kind of things. That's what I've always been really interested in. And so um, I, I, yeah, I wasn't too kind of keen on the idea of studying that at uni. And so I started to think, well, what kind of degrees can I use? Like, what do I have transferable skills for? And I've always been really interested in things like politics. Um, and I sort of began to follow some kind of Supreme Court cases and just read around a little bit about law. Um, and then I sort of thought, yeah, this is something that I can really see myself studying for three years and potentially earning to have a career in. Um, and just something that I, I just felt really engaged with. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> You have just finished your second year of law. Yes. Yeah. What have you thought of your course so far? I, I really like it because it's challenging. Like, it's very challenging. But I always feel pushed in a really good way and I think so one of the things about Oxford is rather than having kind of classes or just lectures our main teaching is based around these like tutorials and tutorials can be like one student and one tutor or maybe two students and one tutor and so in every single tutorial which you have like one or two a week you're really pushed like it's just, it's a conversation and it's not stressful or anything, but you're really pushed and you're really encouraged to share your own ideas. Um, and I've really enjoyed that because I found it challenging, but it's also, I think, especially going from school, it's so refreshing to actually be told, yeah, your opinion matters. And if, you know, what, what do you think about this legal issue? Great. Did you come from a sixth form or college background? So I came from a sixth form. Um, I've stayed at my school all the way from year seven to year 13 and um, I just went to my local state comprehensive school down the road um, and so yeah I did my A levels um, in, in a sixth form. What A levels did you take in sixth form? Um, so uh, my school was a bit weird they still did AS levels and A levels and um, even though they didn't have to but um, at AS I started to do biology um, and then sort of my actual A-levels, I did um, English literature, English language history, and then I did an extended project qualification. And with my extended project qualification, I wrote um, an essay about self-defence laws. And what did any of these subjects help you with your course at university? Yeah, 100%. So I think history, something that I always found really interesting was how um, when you look at laws in particular, how they reflect 
the sort of uh, social setting at the time that that law was created. Um, and so I think in terms of history, for me, it's been quite useful to have that sort of foundation knowledge of what was going on at these different points in time. Um, so, for example, even if it's just you're looking at a statute from like the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s, and you kind of are understanding that this is in the middle of the war, and then going after that, you're looking at like the welfare state and the introduction of the NHS and these kind of things. Um, so I think from that point of view, it's definitely helped. I think in terms of more general skills, the analytical skills and the essay writing skills that you pick up in those subjects is is really useful for law um, but equally I know people who studied like maths for the maths and physics at A level and are studying law and are absolutely fantastic at it and um, and so I think it's a really unique subject in that it's it's kind of very well suited to a lot of different subjects at A level. You said you're in your second year implying that in your third year you would go for a work placement or is it different for your course? So it's different for my course. Um, none of the universities that I applied to actually had like the option to do a work placement um, in the third year. Um, so sometimes people do a year abroad, but I'm not doing a year abroad. Um, I'm just going straight into my final year. Um, so next year I'll be a finalist, which is pretty terrifying. Um, but yeah, then I'll have my exams at the end of next year and hopefully graduate. <laughs> Could you remember the university you're currently studying at? Um, so I study at the University of Oxford. What are the best and worst things about studying at the University of Oxford, starting off with the worst? The worst, okay. The worst, I would say two things, um, and I think they're kind of linked together. I think the first thing is sometimes the workload can just be incredibly intense. Um, I think it's definitely manageable. Like I think a lot of people assume that Oxford students don't do anything but study and that's just so far from the truth. Um, but I think quite often it's because there's, there's such a strong tradition in Oxford. And so that soon, sometimes things aren't particularly flexible. You know, we have these things called collections, which like mock exams every term when we go back. Um, and they're quite a lot of work to prepare for. And I think it's just because there's this like really strong tradition of having these collections. Um, and the other thing, which is a much, much bigger conversation um, is definitely the lack of diversity in Oxford. I think that Oxford is getting there. I think Oxford is definitely nowhere near there. But I think that part of the issues in terms of workload and just some of the things I don't like about Oxford are because of the lack of diversity and I think if we had a more diverse body of students and staff then we could kind of begin to make the overall atmosphere at the university much nicer because we'd have a much wider range of inputs. And the best things? The best things, um, first of all the people, so I feel like a lot of people say this about university but in, in Oxford, we're kind of different. We have a college system. So your college is basically a combination of your halls of residence and like somewhere that you socialize. And sometimes there's sports pitches and a chapel and a prayer room and like all of these things. So you live there and socialize there. And a lot of the times that's where most of your friends will be from. Um, and so I think because of that, you end up making some really amazing friends because you're all in the same boat together. Um, and there's, there's definitely a sense of like college pride. Um, but then from the academic point of view, I definitely say it's that kind of very small group teaching um, that I really like. And I feel as though that's actually suited me really well. I was very, very nervous at first thinking, oh God, I'm going to be sat one-to-one -one with a professor talking about law um, but actually everybody has just been super nice and I've always felt as though my ideas are kind of valid um, which is um, yeah I mean when I'm sort of I was 18 when I started so like when I'm 18 to 20 um, and I sat there with a professor who's sort of in their 60s and has been studying this for ages for them to make you feel as though you know your ideas are actually worth hearing it's uh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> If we go into your Oxford accommodation, where do you stay in your first year? Um, so this varies according to the college that you're at, um, but normally you stay in college. So there's like 35 colleges, I think, in Oxford. Um, and so you stay in your college. Um, 
for my college, Worcester, we, we can stay in our college for all three years of our course, which I do because it's, it's so much cheaper than sort of re renting somewhere else. Um, and that's what most people do. So all my friends are still in college. Um, so you, you tend to stay in college um, for all three years of your course if you're at a college like Worcester. But then some of the other colleges don't have that much accommodation on site. So you tend to move out um, after your first year. But generally, you live like in your college for the first year. Can you tell us about what it was like living there? Yeah, so um, living in college in my first year was kind of weird because I was staying in this um, medieval cottage, which was absolutely freezing to be perfectly honest um but it was nice like it was definitely a cool experience because not many people can say that they've they've had they've had that um but living in college was was nice mostly because in terms of like from a finance point of view it really really helped me um unlike at other universities we only pay for the time that we're there so we only pay for 24 weeks accommodation a year which really really keeps the cost down um which has meant that like my student loan and everything has covered my accommodation which has been a big relief um and um and yeah and I think just the fact that because everybody's living in college um you can form some really good friendships really quite quickly Okay. And how what was it like living in your second year? My was it second, better or worse? My second year was definitely better. So my second year I had a much more modern room that had an ensuite and I had a kitchen. Um, and also because you get to kind of choose who you're living with in second year. Um, and I was living with like my best friend and that was just so fun because we would cook together every evening and like go out and um yeah that was just really fun um and it was just kind of the case where everybody's bedroom doors were always open so we'd just like be chatting to each other all day and um yeah I really liked second year um unfortunately cut short but um yeah <laughs> so just to understand how the Oxford University accommodation works is that an on-site campus or an off-site campus so it's on-site it so it's probably easier to almost explain it as lots of mini campuses almost so you've got the city of Oxford and you've got like the university buildings so for example you've got the different faculties and the university wide libraries and that kind of thing and then all around Oxford there's lots of colleges and um, some of them are really big some of them are really small and um, but they will sort of within themselves have st the students in them so you're a member of the university and you're a member of a college and you'll kind of um, you'll live there potentially for the full duration of your course and um, a lot of them have like gyms some of your tutorials will be there um and and all these kind of things so it's it's a bit weird because oxford itself as a city is quite small and almost taken over by the university in some ways so in some ways it almost feels as though you're on campus and like in your colleges you're very much sort of on campus yeah. but it's it's like a yeah it's very much a mix between the two it's kind of unique <laughs> Is there, are there any other campuses or is that pretty much just the colleges you're in and the sections you're in? Yeah, so the, the colleges that you're in, um, so everyone belongs to a college. Um, mm. And so that's that's kind of your uh, part of your identity almost when you're in Oxford. Um, and then there are some, um, you know, some people will like at other universities live in private accommodation. So the college houses or private accommodation yeah yeah basically um and sometimes it gets a bit more complicated again because then sometimes colleges will have houses that they own that like aren't in the college itself so this is just like a whole um range of different options but basically there's loads of different types of accommodation that you can go for um and generally they're all pretty good um but yeah it's definitely not like say you know, I live in Sheffield. It's definitely not like at the University of Sheffield where you've got the halls of residence um, and then and like reason. people live in. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely a weird middle ground between the two. Could you tell us what do you think the best Oxford accommodation is? Or would you say it's the college accommodation? Oh, um, I think it really depends because even between like, not even between colleges, like even within colleges, accommodation varies so much. Um, I loved my accommodation last year 
and um, my room was like really big and it was just I just really liked the building and stuff um and I think I I one I chose Worcester College was because of the fact that I could live there for all three years of my course and so even though like maybe some of the private accommodation is nicer and that kind of thing the fact that I save so much money by living in college because things are subsidized and I'm only paying for the time I'm there and um, definitely like it you know definitely weighs, weighs things up. Can you tell us about the Oxford area the Oxford nightlife to be more specific? Yeah yeah sure um so I think that um, somebody literally told me when I was applying to Oxford that there was one nightclub in the whole of Oxford and that it was very small and stuff and it's just not true. Um, so Oxford actually has a lot of young people in. It's actually got this sort of, I think when you look at the average age of the people within the city, it's the youngest city in the country. And um, so there's actually a lot of like nightlife and restaurants and bars and all these kind of things and it's very like bustling in an evening it's quite nice um so yeah there's lots of different nightclubs what's the nightclub sorry what's the nightclub for you oh um i would probably say it's probably fever only because it's right at the end of the road so it's literally Ah, like a one minute walk um but yeah there's i mean a lot of people go to there's a nightclub called bridge that a lot of people go to um plus plush which is the lgbtq plus nightclub um yeah there's so many but also like the bars are, are really cool um yeah <laughs> compared to sheffield what would you say the shops and food shops are like is it the same kind of like is it a big city kind of area where it has all your popular shops or has it got more local shops or it's like kind of in between where it has everything you need but not extras or is it just your basic stuff yeah i get you um so it's it's kind of in between i say sheffield's a big city um and so there's a lot of shops there but to be perfectly honest oxford especially now it's got this new shopping center called westgate in it which is basically where it's got like every uh high street shop you could ever think of it's got that and then it's got you know a load of other clothes shops and also some more independent shops and smaller shops um it's all yeah like it's all there the only thing that is definitely missing and I, i want to like write to the companies about this is that there's no like wilco and there's no savers and it pains me to like pay rrp and boots for like shower gel and stuff i feel as though that's probably just because in sheffield there's like so many i'm a bit spoiled for choice but like discount shops that aren't that many of these unfortunately so what general advice would you give to students about the study at university um so i think in general going from a level or like college in your btech to go into um going to university I think the biggest piece of advice I would give is to acknowledge the fact that this might not be an easy transition because I think that when I went to university I just kind of started to do my work and I kind of just felt stupid and I felt like I was falling behind I felt like I couldn't do it and it's literally just because it is a big jump between your A levels or college or whatever to going to university. Like just the style of working is different. It's very independent. Um, and I think as well, like as I've said before, a lot of the time you're kind of encouraged to have your own opinions, which I don't feel as that you particularly are at school or college. Um, and so I think a kind of accepting that you will not be perfect at first, especially like. Yeah, this this is 100% just a learning experience you're there to learn and if you don't understand something like that's fine you'll get there um I think that I think that that's sort of my main thing because I think that I went into university kind of um it knocked my confidence think it knocked my confidence and it shouldn't have and I think if I'd have prepared myself a bit more for the fact that okay I'm going to go and it's going to actually be quite hard at the beginning um I think yeah, I wouldn't have uh, been so worried what advice would you give to students about to study at Oxford University? Um, so basically the same, like ramped up to 100, um, because you kind of get thrown in at the deep end. Um, I mean, I remember in my freshers week, I didn't really get a freshers week. Um, we had this meeting with our tutors and they gave us two reading lists. And these reading lists had got, I don't know, 20 cases on each reading list. And 
I just as you started five, yes like five articles in each reading list and they're like and this is like on the Wednesday and they're like okay so you've got an essay due in on the Monday so it needs to be in on the Sunday evening and you've got an essay due in the following Wednesday and I was like oh my god <laughs> I'm gonna die um but you you I got through it like you just get through it and it, you kind of again realize that you're just going to have to kind of let your standards drop at first. You're just going to have to get through um, and you'll get there. So I think, I think like that also, um, I think with any university, but especially Oxford, um, reminding yourself that you have been chosen to be there and like you deserve to be there because I think everybody just has this feeling like everyone's better than me. I shouldn't be here. I'm not smart enough to be here you know, people like me don't come here, like all of these kind of things. And I think even if you feel like that, just telling yourself to shut up basically, because uh, you can be your own worst enemy. I know I 100% was like, I spent the whole, and I still do it now. Like I spent the whole of my first term thinking I don't fit in here because, you know, everyone around here is from the South. Everyone around here went to a private school. Like, and a lot of these things just weren't true and you just kind of tell yourself these and, and kind of lie to yourself exactly and it just kind of demotivates you so I think just being quite like resilient and stopping that voice in your head <laughs> what advice did you give to students about to study law um so I think this is um law is an interesting subject right because either people have never studied it before or they've studied it at a level but a level law is just totally different to degree law so there's it's almost as though you've still not studied it before um and so I think again you've you've got to kind of appreciate the fact that you um you know don't know anything about this subject really and just kind of accept that the first few weeks will be tough but then once you've kind of got that basic knowledge and kind the of you foundation. understand this yeah exactly and kind of like you understand how statutes work you understand you know what all the different courts are like just the really simple stuff that you might not know about once you've got that then the rest of it will become a bit easier um and yeah i think i think just kind of throwing yourself in trying your best um, but also not putting too much pressure on yourself you chose going to university over an apprenticeship that's going right into work what path you to make this choice um that's a really good question because I think quite frankly, like I just didn't know my options. Um, I, I think I probably would have ended up going on the university route anyway, because I enjoy studying and I enjoy the academic side of law. So not just the practical side of it. Um, but to be honest, I don't think I really knew what my options were. Like, I, I think that at so many sixth forms and colleges, it's all about, yeah, you, you do your A-levels or you do your techs or whatever, and then you go to university and like, that is the route that you set out for yourself. Um, and like now my brother, my brother's five years younger than me, and he's kind of really interested in like building things and engineering -y type things and all this stuff that just blows my mind basically. But he um, he's looking at apprenticeships and, you know, I'm kind of learning more and more about them. I'm like, this is such a great idea, like, especially for people who potentially don't like school so much and want to do like the more practical things. Like, I mean, my brother's brain is just like so practical and like works like that in mine. I think I'm just kind of like more academic and, you know, enjoy the theory of things. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I just didn't know my options. Um, so definitely like explore a broad range. <laughs> Would you have done an apprenticeship knowing what you know now? I don't think I would have, um, only because I, so like since being at university, I, I mean, I really enjoy studying um, and I can see myself, like I want to go on and do a master's and that kind of thing. And so like, I really enjoy looking at the theoretical side of things. Um, as well as the practical application but I know so many people who went to study law because they want to be a lawyer and they don't actually enjoy like the, the practical uh, so they don't actually enjoy like the theory behind it um, and I think that apprenticeships are just like the perfect route um, and I think apprenticeships are so cool like you are earning money you're not in a load of student debt like you um get sort of on the job experience um and i think that yeah i think they're fantastic and i really really hope that like schools and the government and everyone really pushes apprenticeships more because i think that 
I think that as a whole, the UK has just kind of got so stuck in this rut that you have this like set path. Um, and I don't think it should be the case. Okay. At this point, Alex didn't have what I like to call a free for all. So actually, just before we get into that, can you tell us more about L the law student? Yeah, so um, L the law student is a Instagram account and a YouTube account that I set up I think a year ago now, yeah, it's a year ago, after I'd finished my first year of university. Um, I had I had a really tough first year at university. Um, and there was a point where I was very, very close to leaving. Like I, um, yeah, I just was really struggling um, in terms of feeling like I didn't belong there and just feeling quite isolated. And I didn't really want anyone to feel like that, basically. Um, and I wanted people to realise that, you know, Oxford is a place for you. And if you have like the desire to apply and you have the grades to apply, like you should 100% go for it because like there's no such thing as a single Oxford student, like Oxford students from such a wide range of backgrounds and have such a wide range of skills and interests. Um, and so I wanted to basically just share all my experiences and I wanted to kind of help people with things like the law national aptitude test which is just kind of crazy confusing when you first look at it and um, the sort of personal statements and interviews and just kind of demystify all of these weird aspects so that's that's how I sort of started doing that um, and it's been fantastic because I get so many messages from sixth form students saying, hi, um, I've got a question about my personal statement. And I'm always so, so happy to answer because I, I know what it's like to not have somebody like, you know, I didn't know anyone who'd been to Oxford or Cambridge, especially. So, I, you know, I didn't have anyone to kind of go to and ask these questions. And I'm hoping that I can be that person for students who are in a similar situation. Okay. At this point, we let students have what I like to call a free for all. You can say what you want. You can put your act. You could you could talk rubbish. You can literally <laughs> give advice. You can literally do what you want and say what you want. The floor is yours. Oh, I think the main thing um, that I try and convey, like in any school visits I do or just anything, is um, you know. I think a lot of people, whether it's they're looking at Oxford or they're just looking at going to university in general, I think so many people are put off um, at applying to their dream university or for their dream course. And I think the thing is, that I always kind of, I had to, I, one of my friends said this to me and it was just the best bit of advice ever when I was like, I don't know if I should apply or not, I'm not going to get in, um, was, and um, they said to me, well, you have five options on your UCAS form and your dream university is going to take up one of those options. You've still got plans B, C, D, E, like, you know, you're, you've, you've got options. Um, and so do it like on a whim, it might not, work out like you might not get in but um you know I think you, you you should do it just because you know you never know um and like I'm I'm glad that I ended up sort of taking that leap um so yeah I think I think just kind of uh again stopping that voice in your head that's that's telling you not to do it and just just trying anyway <laughs> don't forget to like subscribe and I am plugged in amazing thank you